in the world right now in the United States government. That colonizer owes us tremendously. Whether we get it or not, we're pursuing it. Ten toes down, we're not backing down. You know, we have the courage now and we're moving forward. All we're simply asking of our brothers who are not of the lineage is it just basically don't undermine us. That's all we're saying, don't undermine us. Because guess what? We don't go anywhere on the planet and undermine anybody. We don't have a history or a culture of that. So what we're saying is when you come here and you immigrate, knock yourself out, do what you came here to do. We're fine with that. Just don't get in our political struggle we have with our oppressor. We understand that the oppressor may have given, given immigrants an opportunity or a lane to come here and live their best life that they would have never lived in a continent or anywhere else. We get all of that. We're just saying don't undermine us. It's really that simple. But what we're finding now is you get a lot of people who come over here and they speak on our politics and they start to get in positions of influence and they start to say stuff like, well, you know, get over it, slavery, there's no more, there's no more slavery, there's no more discrimination. You can make the best of what you can do in America. They've totally given up. We're not giving up. So I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things. One, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a bit more than that, right? We've seen some anti-African uh, rhetoric being used by a number of individuals that I would argue is extremely unbecoming of someone who is seeking to what, as you stated, get at the colonizer. Number two, I think one of the major issues many people have, and I'm an African-American, uh, is that we see many individuals in the movement, and not saying you in particular, I've never heard you say that when you was on Dinah's platform, but use rhetoric in which they are parenting the very white supremacists that they state they look, they're seeking to fight. But I think that's another issue that I think many people would take umbrage with as to why they view the FBA movement as what? Problematic. Hold on, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm I'm allow you to provide a retort. I just want you to repeat yourself. I couldn't okay. hear Okay, I say that one of the one of the issues many people take umbrage with with the FBA ADOS movement is the fact that they find many of the individuals who have taken on this movement signifying and parroting the very anti-African, anti-Black rhetoric of the colonizers that we're supposed to be fighting against. So I think that that's one issue. I think a third issue we have to look at when we talk about uh, undermining there isn't a history of African or Caribbean immigrants coming to America and undermining Black liberation struggles. There isn't a history of that. However, what we do know is there have been some Black and African immigrants who have come to America and being, been put in positions of power by the white power structure, just like African Americans have been put in the position, positions of power by the white power structure, and they work to what? Do harm to African people, irrespective of where they are in the world. The last issue that I point I would make is that Kwame Nkrumah taught us that if we are vaguely nationalistic in our approach to defeating white supremacy rather than Pan-Africanist in origin, we would, si would simply be used against each other like pawns on a chessboard. And FBA pushed the rhetoric of them trying to delineate from Africa, which is literally suicide. African-Americans are about 13 or 14 percent of the population. Do you really truly think that you can defeat this whole system of white supremacy with 13 or 14 population? Let me say this. Yeah, thirteen percent. Listen to me. We've all we've we've always been outnumbered on these lands. We've always been undermined by other groups. So we've always been a numerical minority. That's what a lot of I think a lot of Pan Africanists don't understand. We've always been a new a numerical minority, and we fight. We don't run. We don't have a history of running. Well, what's up? Hold on, 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 stop. No, 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 stop. Listen, on my channel, I do not allow people to make claims that are patently false. So I'm going to stop you right there and I'm going to correct you and I'm going to tell you why. First and foremost, whenever African people or Caribbean brothers and sisters come to America, we accuse them of running. The claim that you made of African Americans not having a history of running is patently false. The first African American to repatriate was Paul Kufi. We had a large segment of African Americans go to Haiti after the Civil War. We had a large segment of African Americans go to Liberia and Sierra Leone. Not no, 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 Right. And then we had, of course, in the Garvey movement. So there's been a history of African African American repatriation. In fact, I actually have a book up here entitled 
why African Americans left America and went to Africa. So this whole concept of we not having a history of doing that, we've seen significant movements. Well, what, I said is we don't have, no, what I said is we don't have a culture of that. No, so first off, you said we do not have a history of doing that. Well. Let, me, let me correct oh, no, 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 I will, I will let you finish, but as I say that I do not allow people to make claims that are patently false on my platform. And what That's I'm right. stating, there That's is, right. hey, hold on, hold on, there is significant, scholarly literature and brother Dwayne is the resident historian he could back me up on this of African Americans every century literally in every generation seeking to leave America and go back home or somewhere else so the claim that you made is patently false you could provide a tour I'm going to I'm going to clarify my words maybe I shouldn't have used history we don't have a culture of that here's the deal we, for, for centuries, we've always could have gone to Canada. People forget that. Well, well, there were well. a lot of African Americans that went to Canada, particularly after the uh, Fugitive Slave Act was passed. Say this again? After the Fugitive Slave Act was passed, a very large large population of African Americans moved to Canada. So, what once again, you're, you're talking about? so once again, you're making a claim that is patently false. And that group was led by what? Martin Delaney. They had a conference in Cleveland after the Fugitive Age Slave Act was passed. And they all said, we got to get the hell out of here. Yeah. So and what, remember what I'm saying, you're making a claim that is patently listen to me, false. Listen to, me. listen to me. That's fine. You, you can speak there. What, what, what kind of numbers are you talking about? You're talking about a, 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 a thousand or a few, a few thousand? I'm talking about thousands I'm, I'm talking about uh, the tens the tens of thousands that, that were fine that were financially economically able to left just, just like hold on just like we had what african americans leave the deep south and they went engaged in what two great migrations because they were let me say this everybody, says, hold on, everybody does left. that everybody listen in the world hey if we're dealing with a situation even if they left even if they left here's the deal for argument's sake, let's just assume what you're saying is true. Oh, no, even it is they, true. That's no assumption. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. No even if they left, even if they left, even if they left, they still didn't, though, they, they still didn't undermine the people who remained. And they were undermining. What you're talking about are puppets in the African immigrant, African Caribbean, and African American community who have been put in positions of power. Well, who do you think they let over nowadays? They do extreme vetting when they do immigration. Everybody gets vetted now. Everybody gets vetted. They're not letting in no. They're not letting in no Garvey's or, or or Malcolm X's anymore. All these people they're letting in now are being thoroughly vetted. Just take for take for example with that that Haitian fiasco that happened at the border with Biden's uh, custody and, and border patrol. Ninety nine point nine percent of those people are coming here for economics. They're not coming here to be reinforcements for us to fight against West uh, white supremacy. They're coming here. They're coming here to escape poverty. First and foremost. Absolutely. Secondly. Absolutely. Secondly. Go secondly, right here. when they here. secondly when they get here, they, they the first thing they are gonna ask them, well, what are you coming here for? We're coming here for you got an opportunity. Are you coming here to basically turn up with these FBA? Oh no, FBA. Well, well, why why would they say something like that? First off, hold on. First off, a wise general doesn't discuss battle battle plans with the enemy. I would no that that would be nonsensical for them. To say that anyway. hold, on, hold on, hold on. That would be nonsensical. They're not gonna say that anyway. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That would be nonsensical. I know for, that for someone to show up and say, "Hey, we're here to turn up and destroy." Yes, what? But here's the deal. So here's and the deal. it can get reported. And they it can get reported. The FDA doesn't have no. I, I here, like, here, here, oh, hold on, real quick. And here's the second issue. We also know that there's a reason why immigrants tend to not engage in radical political action the way American citizens do. And the here reason I said there's a reason why immigrants tend to not engage in radical political action. And it's because they know that they would be what deported. I know that. So the, same know that. Know. the same as when I've traveled abroad, something's going on, I shake my head and I keep it moving. And before you know it, they might get your ass on that plane and go back home. So to be right. home, hold on. But, that, but, 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 but to but, make but, the but, claim, but that also means that all skin folk are not kinfolk. We don't all share the same interests because you have limitations. You can't have limitations. You're dealing with in generalizations. You're making assumptions about entire groups of people without even having conversations of, uh, with them regarding because of what a few puppets have said or, uh, in the white in the mainstream media. That is absolutely ridiculous, and I would argue that that is intellectually lazy to do so. If what you're telling me, if what you're telling me is those people who are at the border who are in abject poverty in Haiti, that all of a sudden they're going to come here and they're going to get their weight up, and then once they get their weight up, they're going to basically fight for liberation. When, when basically they're beholden to the people who let them here in the first place, that goes against their, their whole interests. 
They have a conflict of interest. So most Africans that are coming to America, they're really coming here for money. They family. Most Africans that are coming to America, they come in to overseas or the diaspora for money. They have families back. Let me break it down. They have families back home that are literally struggling. For example, for example, let's say you come to America as a continental African, and then you get deported with no money back. Everybody's gonna look at you like like you're literally like the uh, the shame of the whole family because you made it to the promised land and you can't even help your family back home. And then another point is, okay, let's say these Africans come to America, right? And they start like participating in all these movements and then they get deported or put in jail. African-Americans don't have no institutions or infrastructures that's in place to actually protect these people. That's another point also. But I feel like what you keep doing is you keep trying to make it seem like all the coons and the Negro pans are only Africans. This is a global problem. Most African-Americans don't even agree. And most African-Americans don't even identify as FBA. So you need, to, you need to stop making it seem like this problem is only unique to Africans mm-hmm. in the continent. Mm-hmm. This problem is a global black problem. And that's the problem with FBA. You guys keep pushing rhetoric that's historically inaccurate and it's just false. You guys we, have, we, have, we have major coons too. We call them out. We have we major, have the you, have the, you have the richest land mass on the face of the planet. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. So what's your point by making, you made that statement, what's your point? My point is, hey, me personally, death is better than dishonor. Death is better than dishonor. So I'm going to stop you right there. So I'm going to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. So you stated that you believe in fighting against the colonizer here in America. uh, You stated stated when you started your soliloquy that you believe in fighting against the colonizer here in America, correct? First of all, I was addressing the colonizer. It's a yes or no. It's a yes or no. no. You're not going to misquote me. You're misquoting me. I'm asking you. It's a no, yes or no. I'm going to explain. I was addressing Bik- I was addressing Bikwan's point of when when he was talking about continent. And what I said was on your land, land that 90 percent of the people basically look like you. There's death before dishonor. That's what I said. Do you believe before Brother Bikwan even spoke? When you first tapped in, you stated that you believe in fighting against and actually wrote this down, the colonizers on this land. That's what you stated. Me in America, yes. Yeah. yes. And so my, the question I'm, at, I'm gonna mm-hmm. ask you is what radical action have you taken to defeat the colonizer in America? What we're doing right now- No, 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 hold on. I said, what have you done? What have I done? I'm glad yes. you asked. I'm a, I'm a practicing attorney and I've been doing it for 26 years. Okay. I've been, I've been in the criminal justice system for 26 years. I used to be a public defender for many okay. years. I represent young brothers all the time and I'll be gaming them up all the time. So when you talk about what have I done, you're talking about education. So, okay, so what I said radical action to teach colonizer. I didn't say educating black people and defending black people. No, that's the court. first step. That's the no, first no, no, step. No, no, no. You didn't answer the question. But I am, you just I don't have the answer. No, no, because I have a career, I'm an educator as well. I teach African okay. American history, okay. right? But I, you, I asked you what radical action have you taken to defeat the colonizer? I didn't ask you what have you done to educate black people. Those are two separate issues, two separate questions. Because I'm an educator, and I've been an educator for the past twelve years. So the question, of, hold on, hold on. so the question is, you stated that one of the issues that you had a concern with, with ter- in terms of African and Caribbean immigrants, is that they're not likely to engage in radical action to defeat the colonizer. I didn't, I didn't, don't, don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say that. that. Is what I you didn't say. say that. I didn't say that. Okay. What I'm saying is, let, let me let me say that by the way. We what I'm say saying that. is, as we as we as we're pursuing our case for reparations, which is going to be a political, there's going to be a political uh, 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 program that's going to have to be pursued. What we're saying is, we're asking our brothers and sisters from the diaspora not to undermine. That's that's a, that's a real can, can, can you can, can you give me can a you history? Of, can, I, on, can you give me an example, a tangible example? in the history of the African diaspora in which African and Caribbean immigrants have come over here and sought to undermine African-American gains in America. Yes. The man who ran for, the man who, Austin Chang, the guy who ran for Michigan, ran for governor of Michigan, and he said we should do away with Black History Month. I said as a group. No, no, you didn't say as a group, you just said- I did. Just, I just sir, said as sir, a group. Sir, sir, here's the deal, when you say as a group, Yes, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because guess what? Um, who's the guy mm-hmm. who played? Uh, who, 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 what's the name of the guy who played um, Joe Clark and Lean on Me? Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. He he said that we should get rid of a black. And we call him out. 
And we're right, going so once again, it's not based on a person's um nationality. No, but it is. But no. it is. Okay. Because guess what? That's they fine. don't have anything to gain. Thank you. Um, if I can kindly respond to our good brother Braz Reeves lives on. I'm like, did you I get your right, right your name, sir, correctly? Braz Reeves. Oh, okay. Yes, the gentleman is gone. Um, Before you go. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you for supporting the channel. And remember, here at Lumumba Speaks, we always bet on black. Peace.